Hello everyone, how good of you to join and welcome to Surviving Mars on hard mode. That means a thousand percent difficulty. We're going to start a, uh, well, in this beautiful game, we're going to start a colony on a barren planet consisting of drones, preparing infrastructure for humans, and finally, well, terraforming the planet once we have, of course, enough babies and population and stuff like that. Um, before we start with the game, Let's go into the difficulty settings real quick, because that's the most important thing. So for our mission sponsor, we are going with a Paradox Interactive. <laughs> this one is difficulty hard, uh, gives me a funding of 4 million credits, 75 starting applicants and 100 research points per soul, which is not a lot. Uh, for commander profiles, we are going with, I think, the Futurists, Breakthrough Tax a Research 35 uh, 30% faster, gives me the highest difficulty challenge um, edition here that we have, the Futurist. For the logo, I'm really fine with the Paradox. Mystery, we go with a hard one. Uh, if I go random, actually I do lose some difficulty setting here, so let's go with Marsgate. I have no idea about this mystery to be honest here, um, so I'm just choosing one that is hard and we're going with 390%. For the game rules, this is where stuff gets interesting. We're going to activate all the hard rules that we have. Winter is coming. So cold waves are uh, set to maximum level. That means cold waves increase power consumption even more. We get twisters, so dust devils, rating set to max. That means we just get a whole bunch of them all the time. We can only call a passenger rocket once. That means 12 passengers and that's it. We need to survive with that. And yeah, scoodly poop around to make enough babies. Um, colonists periodically become renegades. Crime is more severe. Long ride, rocket travel to time uh, from Mars and back is three times longer than normal. Uh, we get the inflation, import prices increase over time. The hunger can't import food from Earth. That's also going to be quite the nice one. Dust in the wind, dust storm rating set to max level. Armageddon, meteor rating set to max level. So we're just going to get a lot of meteors. Uh, amateurs, we're going to get no specialists. That means all of my people are amateurs <laughs> and they will have a very bad workplace rating. Uh, tech variety, the tech fields are randomized during diff uh, different playthroughs, so I can't cheat my way through the tech levels there. Um, overfunded, I think that's it, right? Yeah. The rest we keep active, so um, in that case here we also have, of course, events, we have terraforming and everything else. We have no bonuses whatsoever, so we really just get everything really difficult for us. Next up is uh, my starting condition. So we are going to start here with these things. That's an explorer. We need that. Um, that's the drone or some drones at least. Sorry, no, it's an, a transporter. That's actually what we need in the beginning to get us the metal in the explorer. We send uh, with a supply pot then um, after that. We do get some polymers, machine parts and electronics and some orbital probes that we can use. We should definitely also save some of our money here for outsourcing our science points. Now, Mars. Beautiful as it is, it is also dangerous. We have uh, several locations available, each give me different uh, difficulty settings across the board. And we're going to start in Olympus Mons, that is, a, that is a crater here that we have. It's going to be a hard map, so steep settings. Um, we are going to have some materials left. Everything on the threat level is though at max level, and then comes also the max level parameters that we have. Um, the coordinates are 15 north and 133 west if you want to play along and the difficulty rating with that is 1025%. The only way how we can further boost that difficulty rating by just choosing another map that has a mountainous topography. However, I do like to have some building space so for me I'm reducing it a bit. It is still really really hard above 1000%. And with that, we're going to have some fun here now, surviving Mars, survival, hard mode, um, trying to establish a colony, self-sustaining, and then also terraforming the planet to a beautiful green uh, paradise that it is. I hope you're going to enjoy this one. Uh, before we start, I also want to thank all my Patreons. If you like my content, please consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the description. And without further ado, go, 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 go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and here we are now on the surface of Mars, looking rather dead, I should say. Not that much going on at the moment on Sol 1. We are at, yep, and I'm also going to pause the game right away. Let's just have a quick look around. We already have one science or research sector um, that I don't like so much because it's in the middle of nowhere here um, where I've just been. I can see that there is definitely something that might be interesting for us, and I have two um, orbital probes, so why not just use them? Oops, in this area here um, to find us the first hmm, points of interest. So there would be something here and we also should 
going up for another one. That was not very successful. There's no materials up there, but at least one concrete deposit we have. Plus, as expected, close to these circles there, there is some attractiveness of vistas. So bonuses that we can use and also, yeah, an average source for rare metals. Not that much, but still fine and an anomaly up there that we can research. Some rocks are also lying in the ground, that's that. Now my rocket full of drones and a transporter, some fuel refineries and also uh, some materials is ready to land the first first of many rockets that will land on this planet here hopefully if not a dust storm is destroying any kind of purpose that we had now let's just find us a suitable landing position we do have concrete down there and we do have the vistas here so that's probably where i'm going to have my domes and this area here is then probably perfect for my first rocket let's just see that we get the the concrete into its area we don't need to have two vistas there in it that should not be necessary. And with that, let's land. The rocket will then land here in a second. However, before we unpause the game, let's also go ahead and start, um, well, um, getting those sectors around us here into, into what we need, right? So we have this one there. We're probably going to expand here, 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 and here. So all around us, let's not get the rocky area in at the moment. Next up, some research. Every time we start the game, it is completely randomized. There's no cheating my way through this one here. Um, and we can just find out what we do need. Rockets and shuttle require less fuel. This is just really nice to get the rocket back, uh, away again. And drones move faster. Ah, I don't know. Performance? Nope. Uh, building farm? Let's go with the drones. And that's about it, to be honest. Because we have nothing else, really, that we can go ahead there for the moment. Let's unpause it real quick so we do find the sectors that we scan and there it is the first rocket by humans landing on mars this is a momentous occasion really and out comes a transporter and then also hopefully some drones there they are my little fellas Perfect. Now, very important, what we need to start with right away is some depots. So the rocket has some materials on board and we definitely want to, um, yeah, well, store them somewhere. I'm going to make a bit of a, a space here in between because I know there's going to be meter rides on this difficulty quite a lot and I don't want to lose everything that we have at once. The transporter we can send out there to scavenge some resources also. So we do have, as we can see here, some metal that's going to be pretty important to us and then also some polymers here as well. Next up on the list is also very important that we start with that as soon as possible is fuel production for my rockets and for that we do need the fuel refinery. We got one prefab for from Earth that we can use, um, that we can have then somewhere. And let's just uh, look it up because we will need to have some electricity. We will have the concrete down here, so it's good to, to combine them kind of like. So we have uh, the fuel that we start. Some solar panels will be our first electricity production. And I would actually like to go ahead with, let's make it four for now, right? So let's, we can unpause it and let's put them on high priority so that we get them out there ASAP to get the first electricity flowing. Also, what we still need and what we got in addition is a moisture evaporator. This is producing some basic water. Um, let's also get this one powered and connect both of them with a smaller pipe like this, right? And they're now connected and will start producing fuel for us then. Very important, we need to keep these buildings here outside of the dust circles. Every kind of building, like rockets, like concrete factories, have a dust circle around them. That means everything within it is going to be very, very dusty and needs maintenance more often, right? So we should definitely keep buildings like this one here outside of that to reduce the maintenance costs overall. Very important on this difficulty, to be honest, that we manage this. I don't know why the fuel refinery starts first. Um, probably because it's a prefab. But that's just that. And then we need the, the solar panels. It does not work at the moment without electricity. My little fellas here, they're already mining some metals over there. We have a smaller metal deposit. We do not have metal from Earth, right? So only some 50 machine parts, 10 polymers, and 15 electronics. That's it. Everything else we need to mine ourselves. My transporter, in the meantime, is already doing a good job here as well. He's way more efficient at that than the drones and takes large bulks of that back home to my depots. There it is. My first solar panel is also powering up. And with that, we start to produce electricity. Each panel produces five electricity. 
only during daytime though. So another very important thing, we have some polymers, is to start getting us some batteries out there. These are going to charge during daytime and then, well, we can use them during nighttime. So the fuel refinery has to work day and night for us to be competitive. What does it mean to be competitive, by the way? Anyway, well, we do have also our milestones, this one here, since science points are going to play a vital role to us and we don't have a lot of science right away, um, getting those milestones before my competitors do this is important. Scan an anomaly, launch a rocket from Mars, find water on Mars. We're not going to be able to do all of that, but most of it we should get. Speaking about anomalies, we need to get us a transporter also from Earth. We can do this with a, um, a supply pot, right? This can only really carry one thing, and that's going to be my, my explorer here. Um, that pushes us down to 1.6 billion that we have now on the credit side, right? So not that much uh, money, since that was already really expensive. And I would like to really use the remaining of my science points to outsource. We only produce 100 science points per soul right now. And as we can see, that would take 10 days to finish only the first research here, which is a very cheap research. We need to outsource. We need to pay money in order to get us more science points out. Let's go for the big outsource right away. That costs us almost all my coin, right? A 1 billion, but it gives me a thousand soul for five days. We can go ahead after this one here to outsource more. But for now, as we can see, we can now finish this in one day instead of in 10 days or 10 souls, which is one Martian day. So in that case, perfect. We can speed up the research with that. That we should do. Meanwhile, my drones, of course, are not idle. They produce or they construct now my next solar panel. There you go. No storms yet, no meteor showers yet. We are looking good. It's sunny right now on this very first day. So we've... We've really landed on a perfect day, to be honest, and that's just that, right? Nothing else we need to worry about in the world. Everything is automated here. Drones don't need food, they don't need oxygen. But of course, preparing for first colonists, for the first humans on Mars, would be my next very important milestone. And for that, well, we do need to set up some infrastructure. That we do right now. The pipes are coming along as well. And boom, there they are. That means my moisture evaporator and my fuel refinery are now connected and we start producing fuel. Eh, just when Sol 1 is really over, so probably a bit too late, but who knows. As we can see, we do need 80 fuel now to get the rocket back into space, back to Earth. However, with the tech that we are going in right now, I think it is half of that, 40. Ooh, might be 62. We'll see about that. And we produce 12 per day right now. So the goal here is to get the rocket away within the first 10 souls or something like that. That would be perfect for us. Now, next up on the line is exploring. So we are scanning those sectors right now very slowly. So we do have something that we can still build in addition. And that is my sensory towers. With the perk that we have already, sensor towers no longer require power and maintenance. I can just build them anywhere really. Um, however, they cost me electronics. That is one of the most expensive goods in the game. We got 15 right now. So I'm going ahead with five um, sensory towers. And let's just get them out there in certain locations, right? So let's make it two here. And let's also get us like up. This is still within the drone hub, right? One here. And probably then also two on that side that we boost our exploration around the base in total. Five of them should be fine. My drones will do it. Oh, this one seems to be not within reach. So let's just make sure that actually it should be. Yeah, it's fine. Now it is perfect that we get all of this working for us. First battery also coming along. That's going to be pretty important for us soon. Now it's getting nighttime soon, right? So for this night, I think Unfortunately, we'll not be able to, to get the battery or to get the fuel station working through the night. Next soul, though, we can do this then. Sensory towers coming along. Spending our first five electronics on this. But it will boost our exploration quickly. There is a milestone that we need to find um, water. Be the first to find water on Mars. This is a race, kind of like, so hopefully there is water somewhere in here, so we can actually get ahead and find us that water source that we are going to need. It's night, the solar panels do not work anymore. So does my moisture vaporator and my fuel refinery. Both of them are now offline. Damn it. Unfortunately, I was not fast enough for this. Alright, we should set up the next building right away. It's an autonomous building. That's the concrete extractor for our first real important basic 
building material. Metal is also really important, but metal we have so much around us we don't need to worry about for now. Concrete we do need to worry about. So let's start ahead with the first building. And there is a, a, a concrete source here with a high grade, very good, and 800 concrete. Oh, that was a close meteorite going down here. And in that case, let's have a look that we can squeeze in two here. That would be perfect. Uh, this is looking like we Second can then have ten. two in this area. We could also have it parallel, so this is it's looking a bit cleaner, right? Like so. Both of them, let's turn one off, the other we can build. Meanwhile, my supply pot has arrived. Lots of things that are happening right now. Let's have this one land here or there, just, just like that. Another thing we should worry about is also a specialized depot for concrete then. So all the concrete is going to be stored right away um, in these depots. And we should also turn off concrete in my main depots here for now, right? Because we want to separate things a bit to e uh, to spread out the, the risk of meteor impacts. That's the concrete. What, very important. Also, it needs a power cable. We don't have solar panels here. Let's go ahead and also get us that power cable all the way down to this concrete factory. Why am I not just building another solar panel here? Simple. The dust circle, right? Solar panels within a dust circle are basically almost non-functioning on this difficulty because they get polluted with dust all the time. So it's pretty important for me to, to have them a bit further away. And with the concrete factory, we will need a bit more power. So I do need to produce some surplus during daytime so that we can also work during nighttime. Advanced Martian engines have been fulfilled. Perfect. And we now need 60 fuel, right? So down from 80, speeding it up a bit. My RC Explorer is here, so we can send it to the first anomaly that we already have there. Pretty cool truck that is now on its way and scanning that. Out of these anomalies, we might find some juicy things like extra science points, money, and also just events basically, or outright technology that is fully researched them. The supply pot, yeah, well, we can also scavenge this for some basic metals. So far, my colony is looking good, but of course, it's all very simple yet. We are very autom autonomous with the drones. They just work automatically as long as there is some power. Concrete factory online. Getting us some concrete now in. And with that, we will then be able to build us like a dome, for example, that we do need for our Martian borns for our first ones, for our first humans on Mars. Sector scanned. First sector scanned. Very good. Unfortunately, no water. Uh, another concrete source with a low grade. This is not good. We will not yield a lot of concrete. However, another anomaly. Let's send the explorer to this one after it finished exploring this one up there, which it's doing right now. Anomaly completed and my transporter is still mining metals at the moment. And then also what I'm happy to see is polymers are also within reach. It is sold too. For now, really, we can just relax a bit and just be really happy. There is the power accumulator that gets now the second concrete. So with that, we can finally then also store some uh, electricity. There it's being built. There's still a few hours left for this day, so we might charge it up a bit, right? And then can our use our buildings already through the first night. Let's actually build another solar panel here. I really want to have a nice surplus of energy. At the moment, we have 15 during daytime. Since we do have 15 during nighttime, uh, we do need, yeah, not 15 during night, uh, daytime, but I think 10. And so we have a nice surplus still. I would like to get this battery here fully charged. And as we can see, we also have the first 20 in it. Oh, uh, milestone achieved, scan and anomaly. We were the first ones. This, of course, boosts my, my first research here a bit by 250 science points. And we have finished the advanced Martian engine. Let's have a look what else we can research here. I'm afraid to say it's very bad right now. We might go for the farm as well, so all the basic things, because once you research something up here, um, you unlock more tech down here, and the more we research of the basic things, the better. And here we also have discovered the six planetary anomalies, a very good one, but for now, let's just work with those two. And we're on our way now also to scan the next anomaly. How's my exploration looking? 
We are in the process of scanning this area up there, 68%. Not looking really promising up there, to be honest. I might then just work a bit more to the south here. Right, so we can queue up my exploration. That should be fine. Lots of concrete over there, and another vista point. Uh, that's good, because we want to make a lot of babies, and vista points help us with that. Concrete, average grade, low grade. Not the best concrete deposits, but they'll they'll just do once once the time comes. All right, it's sh it should be night now soon. It's still not night. That's very good for us, obviously. Charging the battery as much as possible. And offline they go. But for now, my buildings can work a bit longer, right? So it's discharging right now with 15. We already have 120 power stored. That means they will probably be able to work through most of the night. Research complete. Uh, oh, achieved. find find water. We were the first to find water. It is up here. Two water sources, very low and low grade, and another concrete with average grade. Um, that is perfect. So water we are going to need for our Martians, and we've also researched the low G with that because we got the 250 science points out of it. Uh, this is very good here. Now generate 100 uh, research points per soul for each explorer that we have. Let's actually push this one to the first in line, and with that we'll generate one. 100 uh, research soul per soul in addition baseline. My transporter, meanwhile, doesn't have really anything to do. There is some polymers up there. I love polymers. Metal we have plenty of right now anyway. So let's go ahead and scavenge some polymers that we have. Do we have any more polymers? Yeah, it's looking good so far. Another night, the second night on Mars for us. Uh, soul 3 has started. We can enjoy the night sky on this barren wasteland. Of course, the goal is to get the humans on Mars, build us a bigger base, self-sustaining, and also terraform the planet. However, that's going to take quite some time. Right now, all our parameters here are zero. Atmosphere, temperature, water, and vegetation. This is something that is a long-term goal. Research Corporations. A new deep space telescope will be launched to scan the cosmos from a point even further out than Mars. The company behind the telescope, Lambda Industries, has partnered with our sponsor to share the financial burden of the deep space launch. Our sponsor, not one to waste an opportunity to help their most ambitious project, says the splitting of the launch bill will basically pay for a single supply pot. And we could get some extra... Wait a second, do we... Now that's actually pretty good. We get we get this. It doesn't we we don't have to pay this. Uh, we do get a, a free supply pod with any of these here full. The transport we have, and I think one will be fine for the foreseeable future. Orbital probes would uh, speed up the scanning, but to what a whale, to be honest. Uh, fifteen machine parts and especially fifteen electronics is extremely powerful. So I'm going ahead with this supply pod, and yeah, let's land it right away, and also get us another uh, some depots up there because we definitely want to spread, once again, the risk of of losing them, right? Oh, wait a second, this is actually not that great. Um, let's get them here. That's better. And with that, we can then have more electronics. That is a really, really nice boost, to be honest. Thank you very much. We are now uh, 12 fuel out of the 60. And what I can see is that, yeah, we can almost work through the whole night with what we have. New tax are available. We have unlocked a whole new tax here. And with that, as we can see, a lot of new things that we can choose from. We are still working on the Explorer AI, though, for now. That was the anomaly up here. Um, I think we have no more anomalies for now. Nope, that's it. We're still scanning this one. And after that, hopefully, we find us something more. Yep, and we were able to work really through the night. My power, so my solar panels are working again and we can store energy once more. That's perfect. This is how it should be, to be honest, because with that, we will be able to permanently um, refuel our rocket. Since we got some electronics for free, I would actually like to consider um, building me some more sensory towers. And we can absolutely do this um, probably somewhere over here. 
Let's make it two more. Are they within? Yeah, they are within our radius. Let's do this because with that we can speed up our scanning procedures even further. Another thing I would consider is actually getting us a drone commander over. We don't have one yet. It's the third very important vehicle that we need in order to start with the landscaping. Um, or we waste it on research. Oh. Sector scanned, nothing whatsoever has to uh, was found here except one uh, research site down here. But no resources and also nothing that we can collect. Speaking about collectibles, <laughs> up there we have some 25 more metal. Let's go ahead and get this one with the transporter. Back home again as well. In preparation for more power demand, let's build also another battery so we can still squeeze in one more here. And also what I probably will like, the first trade pad. So the launch pad we have already, uh, more or less here when the rocket launches and a trade pad will also be very important for us um, because I would like to start with the food trading then once we get the first uh, Martian or the first humans onto this one. It does require 10 concrete, it's not very expensive and we do have the concrete extractor. Anyway. Right, next sensory towers are finished, speeding up our research e uh, or our exploration even further. And this sector here is scanning now. Research-wise, another very cool one is the Mars crowdfunding. For a thousand so we get uh, one billion dollars. So this sounds like a lot, it's not really. Uh, let's go ahead and push this one after the Explorer AI because with that we get some more income again that we do need for outsourcing more research points and also get us the drone commander um, down here to the surface of Mars. And also finished is my trade pad over here with that we will soon be able then to start trading with our competitors speaking about them right i'm always talking about them there is mars there is sleepy hollow here where we have started our camp of course we already have an overall terraforming progress that is working up now that's because my um competitors are also starting the terraforming at some point right no no at the moment there's nothing we have the colony of the blue sun over here we have the colony of international mars missions so these are like colonies like us right they are going to research they're going to trade with us Stuff like that. They're even giving us missions. And nothing else is at the moment on the surface of Mars. However, we will find more things here and points of interest here at some point. Sector scanned. Another sector scanned. No anomaly, unfortunately. Some water and some concrete. We really don't need this at, uh, at this point. There is, however, some more metal lying around. But that's it. Ah, very good. Research complete on Sol 4 for the Research AI. And this one gives me 100 uh, research per Sol in addition. Mars crowdfunding, this is actually a short one. We should be able to finish this one uh, on the very same day. And we can look for something else. The transporter, for example, harvest more resources. Not really something I would need right now. Uh, the anomalies is something that's tempting. Uh, but I think we are going with the polymer factory and fuel refinery. Only a thousand sold there, so we will be able to finish this more quickly. And also allows the clearing of salvaged and destroyed buildings is a very important tech that we're going to need. Because right now, whenever we destroy something, it's a ruin that's left over and we cannot really do then anything. So definitely very important, because with that we can dismantle then every building. Another sector scanned, unfortunately, no science points, uh, no anomalies, uh, just some underground metal deposit here. Unfortunately, metal does require workforce. This is not something that we can just place there and it works. It does need workers, it does need humans, and they are the most expensive resource you can have on this planet. So for now, I will have to neglect metal. With the refueling, we are halfway there, 30 out of 60. Still going to take us a while there. Since we're going to need more concrete in the future, let's build the second concrete extractor. We do have that. It does cost me some machine parts. It does cost me especially then some machine part maintenance. One every couple of souls. So this is increasing then my permanent machine consumption. Um, for example, the fuel refinery here also costs uh, one machine every so often. And the vapor, mo moisture evaporator costs me two metals. So that would be really cheap. The same with the solar panels, only metal, right? But machine parts, that's expensive. For now, let's go ahead still. We do need way more concrete in the future. Let's connect it here with the power. 
a bit done with it. And by the way, another thing that I just noticed, of course, is that concrete extractors produce waste as well. The waste is being stored here right now in piles. Of course, we want to have it a bit more organized. So let's uh, start building a large dumping site. This is going to be pretty important then in the future for us um, for landscaping projects, for example, that we have some, uh, some, some rocks that we have stored somewhere. So my drones will now, once they have time, um, get the waste here and Sector pile it up down. in these sectors there. All right, another sector, and it looks like there is an anomaly. Perfect. Let's send my explorer over to scan this area. Anything else? Um, polymers would be amazing. Some more metal. But that's it. Metal we have plenty of right now. Polymers, we will need more. And research completed. Mars crowdfunding, $1 billion we get in addition. And we probably unlock a few more things. Increases the research provided by sponsors by 100. That is really good. Let's push this one to the, uh, up here to the priority. With that, we get another 100 a soul or research per soul in addition baseline, right? So that would be 200 in addition then. And that leads to 300 baseline research um, without outsourcing. Once we outsource, of course, we get more again. Oh, look at that, what happens right here, right where my RC Explorer was. Dust Devils appear out of nowhere and immediately destroyed my RC Explorer. It's no longer working. This puts us in a very problematic situation. We have one way to counter this one for the moment, and that is getting us a supply pot over with now the commander that I wanted anyway. Will cost me quite a bit, 300 million in addition to the supply pot. And with that, we can repair it again. However, it's going to take a while. Supply pot is now launching on Earth and on its way back to Mars. Yeah. In the meantime, my explorer will not be able to do anything. Now, these are problematic, right? They're very dangerous and randomly appear everywhere and then just travel around the, the map. If they get too close to my buildings, they will malfunction. We need to repair them. They also destroy drones. Overall, very nasty buggers. And yeah, we just need to keep clear of them usually. It's not always possible. One of many natural disasters you can run into. Another sector scanned. More anomalies appear. Uh, if only I had an explorer right now. Up there we have it. Another metal deposit as well. Uh, some metals here, metals here and concrete. No polymers, unfortunately. At least some anomalies here. My transport is still alive, so let's keep, her, let's keep him close to my base. There is one way how we can tackle these in order to protect my base a bit. And with uh, that is, for example, a trade pad or a landing pad, right? If we build them somewhere here in this area, we can protect them from basically entering our, our base. Right now, the rocket is a bit too far away. We could do this somewhere. No, let's, let's wait for now. But I will be able to build a wall around my base at some point to protect us. I think for now we are fine, though. Refueling, 42 out of 60. And after a bit of a while, the supply pot comes in Night Rider, it's called. <laughs> Very interesting. And let's get this one up here. Landing right away. And with that, we will be able then to get the Explorer back to work. However, the Dust Devils are still around here. And there it's landing with an Explorer. The Explorer also has some drones with it. So four, the Commander. So we will be able now to, to use drones somewhere else other than my rocket, right? Because Knight Rider here has the drones all around it. Oh, and then we also get the first dust storm. A dust storm is set to hit the colony soon. It will cause damage to pipes and cables and also will place a serious strain on all buildings. What is not working during the dust storm is moxies, moisture vaporators and the solar panel outside the dome. Very bad for us. This is very bad luck at the moment. In three souls, this will happen. What we need to do for this one, however, is... Yeah, what should we do about this? The problem is my moisture evaporator will no longer work, no longer produce water, and that means my fuel refiner will also not work anymore. Uh, in three souls, we're producing 30 until then. Yeah, we will be able to get the rocket away before the dust storm hits us, right? Um, so we should be fine. The problem is we'll not be able to build up any stock of fuel. I can't change that at the moment. There's nothing I can do, really. Oh my, they really, really do like my Explorer. Go away, please. I cannot use this either. This is crippling me right now quite a bit, beside the dust storm, of course. 
The first outsourcing is going down already, so we can continue outsourcing now again. Is that right? No, it's not. We cannot do this. Alright, we still need to wait for the outsourcing to completely disappear, I think, before we can outsource scanned. again. Another sector scanned, only some 16 medals, nothing really that we need. Yeah, this is... How long do they exist now, please? I mean, they're really sticking to that explorer. Alright, the time of truth also gets closer. We will soon be able to launch that rocket here. Six more fuel is missing. What we should prepare before we launch it is to get us the drone hub out. We got one of them with us uh, as a prefab. It will consume me um, some electricity, but that's fine. And it will then control the drones because drones just control themselves, right? They need someone to control them and either it's the rocket or it's a drone hub. Um, let's make sure that we get the water supply up here into the radius there as well. So we do need the water then soon. I think something like that should be golden. We have the concrete as well. And yeah, we have everything that we want. Is that right? Yep. Let's build it. Right here in the center of my circles. The circles are not going to disappear, right? Uh, we will, of course, at some point um, free them up again for tourism later on. But for now, I do need... I just need to to, ha to be practical about the whole thing, right? I don't care about tourists for now. The storms are gone, so let's go ahead and send my Complete. commander over here. And Earth Mars initiative has been researched. Another 100 soul per day that we get as a baseline. Now let's outsource with the 1 billion that we have left. Let's get us another 1,000 uh, signs out there for the last time for now, because we're now down to 200 million only. All right, repairing this will come. There is now the cable that we finish. The drone hub is now working and we just need to wait for two more fuel to come in. Meanwhile, that explorer has been repaired. So we can now, ooh, look at that. Two anomalies right beside us. Let's queue them up. That's going to be some juicy research points we get out of that or at least some, some boost to our technology. Let's get the commander back home again to safety. And yeah, there it is. Soul 7, we have finished the refueling process of our rocket. This is a monumentous occasion. For the first time, humans were able to land a rocket and launch it back into space. The drone hub is working, has all the drones now that we want, right? So we can um, actually now, yeah, launch the rocket, return to Earth. Launch procedures started. We get the milestone, being the first colony to achieve this one, getting another 250 science points. It's waiting now for the last drones to disappear and then launching into space. In the night of Soul 7, the rocket disappears on its way back to Earth and yeah, getting us the first colonists then, right? So once it's back on Earth, we are going to choose some 12 people, the only 12 people we'll ever be able to select on Earth, get us them to the colony, and we now need to prepare for them, build up the infrastructure for first Martian-borns then as well, and continue onwards on our fight for terraforming Mars. Stay tuned.